Okay, so we're recording. Today is November 15th, 2015, and this is Sue Moulton, and we're just going to do a little new consultant training. So um, some of the things I just want to talk about is you get your kit in the mail, and that is really the beginning of um, your business. You have now all the tools between the products that come in your kit and all of the online training that's available. So if I didn't exist and I wasn't a huge talker like I am, you literally could learn everything you needed to know about Pampered Chef by going to their website. And so the first thing I'm gonna do, I know Linda can't see this, but I'm gonna teach Linda how to get up online on Zoom so that she can screen share in the future. So Linda, bear with me, because I know you're not gonna be able to see what I'm sharing with the girls, but um, eventually okay. um, I'll be able to show you the video back. So um, I'm going to show you guys the first place you're going to go when you get online, you go to the training and resource tab. It's the fourth tab over. And when you scroll down, you want to go to the getting started resources. That is a home base for all new consultants and everything that you need um, as a new consultant will start at this place. It will link you to the other resource tabs. So when you scroll down, it's going to tell you um, setting goals. And really, one of the most important things um, I feel strongly about is that I want to teach you the mistakes that I made early on so that you don't have to make them. You know, we always learn from the previous generations, and I feel the same thing is true with business. I joke all the time when I screw up something at a show. I go, here, let me tell you what not to do because I've done it at least once before. So the same thing with the business. I didn't have written goals my first seven years of the business. I was doing one show a month, and I was just kind of plotting around one or two shows a month, and um, it met my need. I just needed some fun money for shoes and things like that but when I decided to run this like a business and this is it can be a multi-million dollar business um, you could be selling um, large quantities of pampered chef and making great income so last year I sold a um, hundred and five thousand dollars in pampered chef and so you know when you look at that my husband kind of went oh my god you sold a hundred thousand dollars so I mean that's just the tip of the iceberg I've got friends that are selling two and three hundred thousand dollars so and Nancy Jo Ryan's organization does like I can't even tell you how many millions of dollars per month her organization does and we're all part of her organization so when you look at this business like you are the CEO of your own business and not just I have a little pampered chef business it will change your attitude about how you go about things um, if you're a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home person I think it's a little bit harder actually because you aren't crunched for time so you have to actually set office hours in order to be successful because it's very easy to go oh well I'll just run the vacuum and oh, I'll throw in a little laundry and I'll make myself some lunch and before you know it it's two o'clock in the afternoon and you've gotten no business accomplished so part of my goal is to help you write your goals down and and my job is to help you succeed in whatever your goals are so I'm not going to tell you what your goal should be because when I first started, my goal was to be able to buy cute shoes. So somebody's goal might be to do two shows a month or four shows a month, one a week. Somebody's goal might be, I want to earn the next incentive trip that Pamper Chef has. By the way, you guys need to mark December 8th off on your calendar because that's our holiday party. And I want you to be thinking about who you can bring to that as well. All of our meetings, our team meetings and our new consultant trainings are open for guests to join us. So you need to be thinking about um, potential team members and inviting them. And there'll be a little tree. It's called the giving tree. So when you share the business with other people, I'm going to reward you for doing that. Um, so... Um, uh, these meetings are to share our business with other people. So whatever your goal is, it's my job to help you achieve that. So one-on-one, -on -one, we're going to have conversations about, all right, what do you want to accomplish? Like I know um, Wendy's goal is, or her current goal is she wants to promote to a director and she wants her business to sustain enough income uh, to replace her full-time job because she also quit her other job. Same with Sabrina. She quit a full-time job. She needs to produce a certain amount of income for her household. Um, she also wants to promote to a director. Oh, good. Look at that. She's got a little board up that we made. Very nice. That was one of our team meetings 
things uh, last month that we did. Um, we did some goal boards and stuff like that. So we're going to talk about vision boards. We're going to talk about goal boards and how to track them. And it's my job to help you. Whatever you decide you want to accomplish, it's my job to help you do that. The second thing is goals need to be what are called SMART, S-M-A-R-T. They're supposed to be specific. So you might say, um, you know, I, I want to make money. Okay, that's a good goal, but we need to be more specific about it. How much money do you need? Uh, well, I need to be able to pay my bills. Okay, well, let's write down your bills. Are you paying all your bills? Are you splitting them with somebody else? How, uh, do you want your bills to be covered, you know, just each month or do you need extra? Or are you looking to save for a trip? And if so, where are you going? How much is it going to cost? You want to break all those things down so you know that we can turn that into, all right, that means you need to do X number of shows on average. And we'll talk over the weeks to come about... Um, uh, I'll stop screen sharing there. Um, we'll talk over the weeks to come about um, how to reassess your goals based on what your show averages are. So like Sabrina's had a couple shows under her belt. So she and I can do um, a, a little training. Actually, I will screen share again. And I'll teach her how to find her show average. So when you're on your Pampered Chef website, you can actually go in um, and look at all your stats under Consultant Connection, and um, you can see where you're at for um, how much you've sold, how much you've sold each month, um, how much your show averages are. And when you do that, that'll help you know whether you need to have like more um, people at your show, whether you need to have... Um, uh, more uh, higher sales, things like that. So performance details, that's what we want. So when you go to Consultant Connection there, um, Sabrina, or anybody who's there, Consultant Connection is this section here and it tells us currently, I've already submitted $5,048 this month, our team's already submitted $10,088 this month, and if I wanted to go back and look at like last month, what we did as a team, I could just do a drop down and I can go look at everybody on the team or what we did as a total. Um, so this is really good for you guys to see like who submitted, what shows you have, whether they were cooking shows or catalog shows. And then all of your stats are here. So you can, I can look and see like what was, what's my average currently. So my current average this month, because I haven't submitted on all my shows yet, is only $747. So my averages are usually closer to $800 and I have a $1,400 and a $1,000 show still yet to close tomorrow and then a $500 one. So my show averages will probably be around, same thing, around $800. So I personally need to work on, um, you know, talking a little bit more about our power tools because I want my show averages, my next year's goal is I want my show averages to be over 1000 So each year you make a goal. Then the next thing you want to do is um, there's a basic recipe through Pampered Chef. It's called 321, and you'll hear that a lot. Three shows, um, three contacts a day, two shows a week, and one recruit a month. That is the secret to success with Pampered Chef, and it is totally true. So three contacts a day might be you're out grocery shopping, you know, just life. You're taking your kids to the, you know, play date or to soccer or you're out, um, you know, just the things that you're doing in everyday life. You're meeting people in different places. When you're doing that, Hi, Stephanie. When you're doing that, you want to make sure that um, you're bringing up the conversation of Pampered Chef. And one of the things that I teach at our trainings is what's called small talk and how to turn a conversation around and turn it into um, a Pampered Chef conversation. So one of the things I want to do with our team is sometime after December 17th, which is the deadline for Christmas that we have to have our, de our stuff in, I want us to go out on a little shopping spree. So we're just going to, whoever wants to come with me, I'm going down to Massachusetts to work with my team down there on the Saturday after, but maybe it'll be like the Monday or Tuesday, the week of Christmas when everybody's out shopping. Um, those of you who are available during the day, will go over to the mall or we'll go someplace and we'll actually do some Christmas shopping. And I'll look for opportunities to show you how to do an out and about and to talk to strangers about the business. Um, and those of you who work during the day, then we'll pick a night and we'll go out during the night. So maybe it'll be after Christmas, but before New Year's. And we'll go out like on a Wednesday night or something like that. Um, and we'll go and do the same thing. 
So just food for thought, I'll teach you how to do these things. Um, so then, so that's teaching ourselves three, two, one, three contacts a day, two shows a week, and then one recruit a month. And if you're doing two shows a week, you're going to run into about one recruit on average per month based on those shows. Um, and then we're going to teach you how to host coach. <coughs> Once you have your shows booked, there's a whole series online on how to successfully host coach and to teach your hostesses, um, how to have successful shows. And here's why that's important. You're going to go out of your house two times a week. You could go out of your house and you could do two $300 shows, or you could do two $500 shows, or you could do two $1,000 shows. You're going out of the house for the same amount of time. So we say that you earn your paycheck or your commission check before the show. It's in the host coaching. It's in the invitations. It's encouraging your hostess to do follow-ups, and you actually could collect your paycheck when you show up at the show. Okay, so um, we'll talk more about that. Now, I'm going to do a screen share um, on this again, and I apologize, Linda, but I'll get you all the forms when I see you on Monday um, on what these are. So what I'm going to screen share now is, what's that? So I, I'm going to, I'll talk through what they are so that you'll know what they are, Linda, but I'm going to show them to the girls that are online right now. So okay, the, thank you. The first thing is when you get your kit, you're going to get a 30-day um, a checklist um, in your kit, and it's going to talk about the things that you need to go over. And I like to go over this with you because it's so overwhelming. You get your products, you want to get cooking, you got to book your shows and all of that. So you can earn Pampered Chef dollars for every $1,250 you sell in your first 90 days. So in your welcome email from Pampered Chef, they're going to tell you what your 90-day, what your 30-day, and what your 90-day mark is. If you can't find that, you can always email me or text me because I have that access to that information too. So we want to know your 30-day mark because when you all signed up, they had some special, like this month, if a team member joins Pampered Chef in November and in their first 30 days, they sell $1,250, what do they get? That's yes, that's right. The grill pan with the panini press. Yep. Worth like $125 in addition to their commission check and in addition to this 100 pampered chef dollars they also get. So they're getting basically $225 bonus plus a commission on their $1250 or however much they sell. Now, um, that's unlimited. So you sell 5,000, you sell 10,000, you sell 15,000. I had a girl on my team in her first three months sold 15,000 and she got like, um, I don't know. I can't even remember how many, I think she got 1200 pampered chef dollars by the time she was done her first 90 days because of how much she sold. It was phenomenal. She had a big fundraiser at the very beginning. So you want to make a goal, like what do I want to use my Pampered Chef dollars for? Because you can buy more products with it, you can use it for, um, for supplies, door prizes, and things like that. You also get 100 Pampered Chef dollars for every new consultant who joins your team, and that's really important too, because now is the time that people are looking to earn some extra income. So I recommend that you start talking to people right away, especially if you're new. That's the time that you want to be bringing people with you because they're going to want, um, you know, it's like having a walking buddy. So there's a Succeed With Us booklet that comes in your new consultant kit. I recommend that you go through that, and we can go through that together over the phone, but it's going to help you walk through the steps you need. You're going to build your list of 100. That comes in that Succeed With Us booklet. I recommend you leave that out or leave a line sheet of paper out at your house, and you just start writing down everybody that you can think of. You don't want to prejudge. These are the people that you want to announce your business to. Because the worst thing that can happen is when you, the Pampered Chef girl, gets invited to a Pampered Chef show because they don't know that you're the Pampered Chef lady. So that happened to me once early on in my business. It was the bookkeeper at my, my real job, and she invited me to a Pampered Chef show, and I was so ripping mad at myself because she obviously didn't know that, that I did Pampered Chef. So I hadn't let it be known because I thought it maybe it was a conflict of interest or anything. But I thought, darn it, that should have been my show. So make sure that everybody's on your list. Some of the people on your list, 
you're going to invite to join the business with you because they're fun or they like to cook or they're good business people or they could, they're really motivated because they need the money. They have a project at um, their house they want to do or they need to help pay for daycare or car payment or something like that. Other people you're going to ask to uh, host a show with you. And then other people, you're just going to announce, hey, by the way, I started my own Pampered Chef business. If you know of anybody who's looking for anything, I'm the girl to go to or the guy because we do have guys on our team off and on. So, um, and don't prejudge because guys make phenomenal consultants. What girl does not want to watch a guy cook for them, right? So if you right. have guy friends, make sure that you're thinking of them. The top seller for Pampered Chef for years running has been a guy. So, um, so keep that in mind. Um, so keep your list going and we'll work on what to say and who to call, okay? But you gotta have a long list. Next, team meetings. Team meetings are always the first and third Tuesday of the month. Do not book shows on those days. The only exceptions to that are, usually December's an exception, but this year they asked us to do our holiday meeting that week, so I was like, all right, so we're doing it on the 8th. Um, and, to, uh, this coming Tuesday, I'm actually canceling the new consultant training. That's why we're doing it tonight via Zoom because my son and my husband and I are going to Boston for the day. So <laughs> I'm taking full advantage of him being home for this last week. So um, Don't blame you. Yeah. So, so first and third Tuesdays of the month, I highlight them in yellow in my day timer so I don't book shows so I remember. Um, and if it lands on... Memorial Day or if it lands on Veterans Day, most of the time we still hold the meetings. There's very few exceptions. Obviously, if it's like the 4th of July, then we're going to reschedule. But, um, but we pick a Tuesday so that it normally doesn't fall on those Monday holidays, okay? So that's why I picked that. And that way it's easy for you guys to remember when you're getting new team members on your team. You could tell them right away, first and third Tuesdays of the month, mark them off. So the third Tuesday of the month is the new consultant training. We're going to talk about, we're going to do a recipe. We're going to talk about what do you say at the show? What do we say about a knife? Um, how do you upsell? Those type of things. The first Tuesday of the month is team recognition and what's pertinent each month. So what are the specials? How do we do vendor fairs? Um, you know, how do we do recruiting interviews? Those type of things, just basic skills. Um, so we'll go over more of this uh, Succeed With Us checklist, but I don't want to use my whole time on it. But this comes with your kit and all of these forms are on our team Facebook page. So if you're on our team and you're not on our team Facebook page yet, you need to send me a message and I will get you on the team Facebook page. I do ask you to look at that at least once a day. That is my main source of communication with our team is Facebook. So I'll post, I posted two different posts today. I posted a file, which are some scripts for your follow-up calls, two days, two weeks, two months. Um, and um, a word choice for inviting people that you're meeting at your shows right now that are potential recruit leads, how to invite them to our holiday Christmas party or how to invite them to our next team meeting, which would be the one after the holiday Christmas party. So um, just keep that in mind that that's where I want you to go to find the majority of your resources, okay? Um, so the next, um, I don't know why I stopped screen sharing. I just meant to uh, pull up the next document. So the next thing I want to talk to you about, and Linda, I'm going to do this with you on Monday, so you'll actually be able to see the paperwork. Um, okay. But what this is called is um, why book two shows from every party? And I think this is great that Sabrina just said that she booked two shows from her party because this is key. So for those of you who can see the, um, if you have a piece of paper, Linda, you can follow along. Just draw, draw a T on your paper a large T, and in the top left-hand corner, you're going to say two, and on the top right-hand corner, you're going to say one. And what that means is what happens if you book two shows from every show on the left-hand column and one show from every show on the right-hand column. So we're going to start with um, the, the first month. So month one, if you book eight shows, and you hold six because two will cancel or reschedule. So just 
don't, I mean, it's still depressing. It still makes you feel terrible when somebody reschedules with you, but it happens to all of us and it is part of our business. We get a 20% roll off in direct sales. So um, when you need to book more, like if you say, okay, I need $600 this month, so I need to book six shows or five shows to earn $600, you really need to book eight shows to earn that because you want to make sure that that you have enough fluff in case people cancel, okay? The average brandy new consultant does a $500 show and you'll earn a minimum of $100. So that's where I was coming up with those numbers. So um, first month, you book eight, hold six. So six shows at two bookings each, you now have 12 future bookings after the end of month one, right? So then the right-hand column, Linda, under the one show a month, you book eight, two cancel, so eight minus two is six, six times one booking, now you have six shows. So now we're going into month two. So back on the left-hand side of the column, we started with um, eight shows, we ended the month with 12 future bookings, we start month two with 12 bookings, minus two is 10 bookings held, times two bookings each, now we're at 20 bookings, future bookings at the end of month two, right? That's two bookings mm -hmm. every show. Now go to column to the right. We ended month one, we had eight shows minus six, we got one booking each, we started month two with six shows. Six minus two is four, four with one booking, we only have four. So column left, we have 20 shows, column right, we have four shows. We're going into month three. Month three. 20 shows, uh, minus two is 18 times two bookings each. We're at about 32 shows, future shows. So you have about three months booked up at this point, or at least, you know, two solid months. Um, month three, in the one column, we're down to four shows. We get two cancellations. We get hold two shows, and we get one booking each. We're going into month four with two bookings. Going into month four on the other side, we're starting with 32 bookings. Now at 32 bookings, you're starting to get four cancellations each because you're getting a higher number of bookings, so you're getting a higher percentage of cancellations. But 32 minus four, 28 times two bookings each. Now you go to the right-hand column, at the end of month four, you're out of business because with one booking each, it only takes four months before somebody's gonna quit Pam Pampered Chef because they ran out of bookings. So it's really important that your goal is to book two or more shows at every show. Now, do we book two or more shows at every show? No, but what do we do? I'm going to teach you different things that you can do to make up for those bookings. So some of the things that you would do is um, you would, uh, call, if you didn't get two bookings from every show, you would call the outside orders on the shows because those are people that you didn't see at checkout. And we're going to talk about how to do a full service checkout. But those are the first people you would call because those are the easiest. So right after the show, you'd be like, hey, Sabrina, I'm so sorry I missed you at Wendy's show the other night. We had a great time. Do you have a quick second? I just want to tell you about the specials. Sabrina goes, sure. You say, thank you so much for your manual food processor order. I'm going to send your recipe cookbook for that, by the way, to your email. And by the way, I have this phenomenal special going on in December where not only can you earn free and half price and discounted products like Wendy did, but you can also pick any one item or any one set at 60% off. How about we get some of your friends together since you missed out on all the fun at Wendy's house and we do wine, cheese, and chocolate. And if she's like, oh, well, the holidays are really busy. You know, we're, we're doing this, that, and the other thing. Wow, it really sounds like you could use a night off. I do all the cooking. All you have to do is pick up the ingredients or your friends do the cooking if we do station style shows. Um, you know, do you want to try to do it while your house is all decorated or would you prefer me um, for us to do it in January after the holidays? So you pitch the whole, your house is all decorated, everything's all clean, you're all ready. If they still say no, then you say, or would you like to do it in January? If she says, I think I'd rather do something after the first of the year, great. Are you a weekend or a weekday kind of person? You do that because you know which days you're working, whether you're working weekends or weekdays, and maybe you're working, like I work Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays typically for shows. So if they say they're a weekend, 
I usually say, well, does Friday night count as a weekend to you? And they say, yes. And I say, great. I have two Fridays and one Saturday left. Which do you prefer? So you're giving them two choices and then two choices until you narrow it down. Again, I'll, t I'll retrain and teach you guys on that, but that's what you do for follow-up. And if they say no, that is fine. You're doing a customer care call. You're thanking them for purchasing from you. You're going to end that phone call on a positive note. And how many times have you purchased either online or through a direct sales company and you've never received a phone call? The only phone call I have ever received for purchasing anything was there's a jeweler, K Jewelers up in the Tilton Mall, and we bought my daughter a purity ring when she turned 13. And I got a phone call from K Jewelers every six months since then. So they do great customer service and follow up. Hi, Sue, we just want to let you know that we're having our semi-annual sale, and we'd love to have you up there, and blah, blah, blah. That is great customer service. That's what we should strive to be is great customer service. So um, I did post a, um, like a schedule on following up with your customers too, if you have time. When your schedule is full and you're booked and you don't have time to do that, that's fine. But if you're doing customer care calls on a regular basis, what you do today, you're going to see the results for it in 30 and 60 and 90 days later. So if you're not making any phone calls right now, come February, you're probably going to be running out of bookings. So you want to be touching base with your customers now saying, thank you so much for coming to the show. I appreciate it. I just wanted to let you know, um, you know, that I'll be touching base with you in a couple months to see if there's anything else I can help you with. See if you have a pantry order or whatever. Then when you follow up with them later, you'll say, oh, by the way, is it time to get your friends back together? I know it's been a couple months. We all, you know, we're stuck in mud season by now or whatever. So I'll, I'll have things to share with you and what to say, but you want to be touching base with them before you're asking them of anything, you know, you're thanking them for their order. You're following up. Did you get your products? Okay. Do you need anything from me? Was anything broken? So that by the third time you call, they're looking forward to picking up the phone because you've never asked them. You know, you're not berating them like, oh, well, you host a show, that kind of thing. Um, so I only have about five minutes left, so I want to give you guys an opportunity to ask questions. So it's free game, whatever you want to ask. You guys got to take yourselves off mute. Anything you want to know about how to do a show, anything specific that you want me to, to touch base on. I think you probably you covered pretty much all of it. <laughs> I would like to know about um, how you make that transition from the kitchen to the checkout smoothly without it being awkward. Perfect. So I call it a wrap up. So when I'm done cooking, I say, okay, ladies, thank you so much for your attention here. What I want to do is I want to give you some housekeeping tips. So if I can have your attention, have you look at your order form. On the left-hand side of the order form, there's a little section here that talks about if you're interested in hosting a show, if you're interested in the business opportunity, you want to be added to my newsletter, et cetera. Obviously, you're going to want to check yes, because why wouldn't we want to duplicate this night tonight? So um, I, you know, I'll give you some information about the business if you're interested in that. If you want to book a show, I'll let you know what dates I have. I'm going to be set up here in the living room. I'm going to put my dishes in the sink to soak. And by the way, you just put your knives to the side of the sink, anything that's sharp, but stick everything else in a sink of warm, soapy dishes. Somebody will walk by and do your dishes for you while you're doing checkout. It's great. Helps you get out of the kitchen fast. And then you go back into the other room and you say, I'll be set up right here off to the side. If you have any questions and don't worry about totaling your order up, that's what my computer's for. And then I talk about rounding up for Feeding America Food Bank. Um, and then I always put my hand up and I say, is there anybody here that has young kids or really needs to go scoot out of here quickly? Cause I want to make sure I take you first. And there's always somebody. So you say, great, I'll start with you. And when I'm done with you, you're going to come out here and yell next or number nine. And everybody laughs like a, you know, deli line. And so when I'm done doing her checkout, cause I don't want them putting all their orders in a stack and walking away. I want to have that one-on-one -on -one time with every customer. And so you set it up from the very beginning. This is how checkout is going to be. Here's where I'm going to be. This is what you're going to do. And when you tell them that, they do exactly what you say. If you don't tell them, it's funny. I'm so used to telling them, well, I didn't tell them one time. And I had a line of people like literally standing in line one after another. And I, I, I thought to myself, oh, this is so awkward. I haven't had this happen in so long. So I said, girls, you can go have another glass of wine and I'll just have Sally here and give a shout out when we're done if you want. So that's how you get them to disperse. So they're not standing in line waiting for checkout. Now, if that does happen, you're going to have to punt. 
you know, do checkout with a calculator on your cell phone if that's faster than doing the online checkout. I've done that many times. When you have a room full of 20 people and it's taken a long time to do checkout, flip open a calculator and just do your additions there if you need to um, so that you can talk to them and not be spending so much time looking at the computer. You're going to have to gauge that because you don't want checkout to be so long. And that's one of the, uh, the harder parts is when you have a really good attendance, sometimes you have long, long that. Any other questions? That's a good question, Sabrina. So it's like a, a wrap up at the end. So, um, so what I'll do the next time we get together, and I might do another video conference call since it's going to be our Christmas party the next time. So I might pick another one where um, even if a couple people can be on, I, I take this recording and I will post this. This will be a YouTube video and I will post this YouTube video to our team page so you can watch it again. And then I might do another video talking about, you know, what to say at your first shows and stuff like that. If you have any questions, just text me or email me or Facebook message me and I'd be happy to answer them for you. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, ladies. Good night. Thank you. All right. Good night. Bye.